Yeah, yeah. What? Understand, I got a lot on my mind. A lot on my chest. That's why. What's going on, everybody? Hello, Jones with Midnight Comics here. And welcome to another episode of Indie Breakdown, where we break down your favorite indie comic book character stats, powers, and abilities to determine who would end up winning an indie versus matchup. So today we actually have somebody else from the Concrete family. Awesome, awesome author. You would not guess that she's new to the game, or rather how she calls herself the comic book noob. Uh, we're going to welcome up Carla to the stage. What's going on? I'm doing good, good. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Thank you for coming on. Um, awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. <laughs> for sure. Um, so with that being said, we're going to dive in. I want to know. First off, what is the inspiration behind the character Luna? Luna, Luna is a queen. So I, I pulled, a, I pulled uh, from a lot of sources of inspiration. Number one, um, Luna was a figure in my, um, I guess, subconscious for many, many years because I always would dream about her. Um, but she never had a name, never had really a face, but she would just always show up when I needed her. So, you know, I guess a part of that inspiration, you know, comes from within. And mm -hmm. then uh, just looking at the many, um, the queens that we have around us, not only in our families, but also in our culture at this present moment. So um, Luna is kind of like a, you know, a mix of all those sources of inspiration. Okay. And then I, I love your story of how you got into writing comics. If you didn't mind sharing that again with, with the folks listening and watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many, many, many times before I've said that Chadwick Boseman was my inspiration. You know, he was the one that his performance of T'Challa was what made me pick up my pen again. Cause I used to write all the time when I was younger, but mm -hmm. you know, life happens, you know, things happen. Yeah. Um, I started writing again. And then I was like, you know, I got, I, I started writing. Luna was actually supposed to be a novel at first, but I got bored. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I can turn this into a comic book. And so I was already reading, you know, some of the, like the, the mainstream comics, like Wonder Woman. Um, but then I started delving into like the indie book scene. And, that, and that's when I discovered you all, Concrete Comics. And so, um, you know, and pretty much this whole entire year has been dedicated to the indie space. I haven't really dived into mainstream comics in a while. Um, I'm still trying to catch up with, you know, all the things that I've been getting from the Kickstarters and stuff like that. So, but that's that's my story in a nutshell. And that, that you know, that was about um, that was around 2018, 2019. So I'm, I'm re very new to this space still. There's still. Yeah. So many characters that I'm still discovering. So, fair enough. Okay. So, now moving into Luna and what all she could do. Tell us. Um, yeah. Tell us. Tell us what she could do. Let's just start from what's what's her power set. What what, what does she got? Bring what she bring into the table. Well, I have my trading card here for Luna. Okay. So, um, yeah. These these I just discovered this company that makes like trading card trading cards mm -hmm. for um whatever, and so. I um, made comment, trading cards for, for Luna to offer like an upcoming Kickstarters. And of course, um, you know, the, the conventions that I'm hopefully going to be accepted to vend, vend at. Mm -hmm. So um, her power set is, is, is going to get um, stronger and stronger as she goes on. Okay. Cause at this point in time, um, she, we do know she has a connection to the moon. So, some of her earlier powers that we see are going to be resemble those that you might see coming from someone who has a, a connection to the moon. So, okay. um, so she right now in the story, she has the ability to emit a seoplasmic biofield from herself. And it, and, and it looks like a, uh, once it manifests, it looks like a big, sphere or cloud and mm -hmm. Ian the artist kind of made reference to that in this very first page I have in the background you see the pinks it's kind of yeah. like that you know so Ian is is the artist and he you know kind of gave us a foreshadow of her powers in the in the, the first part in the very first page um and then as the story goes on she will um and this seoplasm biofield is very strong it's actually impenetrable um there's only one person that can penetrate it 
um, but it's pretty much impenetrable. And if you are caught as she is forming it, it can kill you. Um, but one, but everything inside of it is is safe. But you know, if you try to, you're not going to be able to break it. It's, it's like impenetrable. Um, so then as the story goes on, um, she's, of course, is going to be able to manifest powers that, you know, we, we associate with the moon today. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, she's able to control water. Um, okay. You know, we know that the moon has a, a very, um, the moon is connected to our, our oceans and our waves. Mm -hmm. So she'll be able to control water in a sense. Um, she also has an influence over animals. So she doesn't control animals. But mm -hmm. she she has a connection to animals as well. Um, she has the ability to reflect light, just like the moon. Um, she can burn red. Um, she of course, and of course, she has super strength, durability, stamina, and she can fly. Um, and then I, I haven't quite really figured out how I'm going to do this, but I do. She does, she is an empath, but that's only okay. when she's manifesting her powers. So. <laughs> but I haven't quite narrowed in on how I want that to manifest itself. And then lastly, she he, she had because she's an empath, she has the ability to sense others' presence and energy. And that will allow her to kind of, you know, not not necessarily time travel, but she'll use that that power to connect to people of the past and the future. So um she she's a pretty she's very powerful, mm -hmm. but she has not manifested all her powers quite yet. So in this part of her story, she's still just beginning to rediscover her powers that were suppressed as she was a child. So, um, but that that is her full power set that it would eventually be. Um, Expanded you know, on. Yeah, yeah. But right now, um, she's not there yet. She's not there yet. Okay. So it's funny you said that. I did jot that down. I was going to ask what were the suppressed powers initially. So. Mm -hmm. Um, two things. So in regards to suppressed powers, a lot of these that you listed at the moment are sort of suppressed, but she has some type of access to it currently, but she's she, not at her top. She doesn't, yet. she doesn't, you know, you remember how Jean didn't know, depending on which storyline you read, mm -hmm. um, he did not know she had a connection to the Phoenix, you know, so in right. some storylines, she was the Phoenix and other storylines, the Phoenix, you know, kind of um, embedded, you know, took over her body. Mm -hmm. But just think about the storyline where Jean was, um, she was inside her subconscious was the Phoenix. So that's kind of okay. how Luna is. You know, she doesn't know she's this powerful yet. Um, and in the first issue, we saw that her parents suppressed her powers mm -hmm. because of uh, of something, of something. But there's a reason yeah. why they did so. So she is just now kind of awakening and finding out that she actually is of the energy and she will, as different events unfold, those those powers will be kind of like pushed to the forefront. But she doesn't know she has this power yet. She doesn't even know, she's not even aware of that she has this power set yet. Oh, okay. So then next question. So with the energy keepers and stuff like that, I remember that in like the, like the kind of preface, I guess, at the beginning of the book. So mm -hmm. she's an energy keeper. Can you dive into what that is and how that directly affects her. And I'm jotting notes down. Just prepare. I have other questions too. I just want, don't want to forget them. Okay. So energy, energy keepers are like our future heroes of the universe. Okay. Um, so Luna's story takes place thousands of years into the future and old earth is, is gone. Our heroes are gone. So the energy keepers is like this new generation of heroes. And I call them energy keepers because they are the keeper of the universe's energy. So everything that comes with the universe, you know, super, all the flight, flight, strength, um, cosmic connection, these are what these energy energy keepers hold. Some are good, some are bad, you know. So, um, but it, Luna obviously is on the, the the side of right, so she mm -hmm. is going to use her. Um, powers as an energy keeper to protect her kingdom, protect her peace, and you know save her people. Okay, so let me ask this: in re since they're on a new planet and all of that, um, they they're still essentially humans, but are they any more durable or stronger on a, like the standard level? Like I know, of course, she's an energy keeper, so she's 
she's going to be she's going to be stronger she's going to have a power set what have you like that mm -hmm. but it's this new generation of humans i was going to say earthlings they're not really mm -hmm. earthlings necessarily but humans if you would mm -hmm. are they are they naturally stronger or are they more durable and all of that or are they just like us but several have more uh or more attuned to the universe itself I, that last part so our descendants will be more in tune with the universe because they they've learned from thousands and thousands of years of humans trying to do things their way that that way doesn't work you know so our descendants have learned how to become one with the universe, which means that the universe will give back to them, meaning it will unlock its secrets and give that to them. So some are energy keepers and but most are, you know, yes, they're more, they're a little bit stronger than us. They're they're mm -hmm. a little bit wiser than us, um, but they're still regular compared to the energy keepers. But okay. it's it's more like they're a more perfect version of us because they have um, learned what it means to live with the universe as opposed to trying to constantly fight it and take take what they can from it. Okay. Now, I have like two pages of notes here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we see her and in that picture of the background. Uh, so she's, mm -hmm. she's training, obviously. So she has some type of uh, uh, fight training. What? type of martial arts or what type of training does she have obviously of course the year is like ten thousand, so the, the the arts look a lot different or what have you yeah. but what are, what are we looking at in regards to her, her fighting ability her, her skills and technique so i don't i really haven't given it a name and i actually have not given it much thought as to what right. type of hand-to-hand -hand combat she's she's proficient at but mm -hmm. she can she can hold her own in a fist fight um okay. i mean i wouldn't call her the most skilled um, she's no cat woman, you know. <laughs> okay, no fair, fair. But she um she can hold her own, but her her she will use her powers more. So, but you know, here in this scene, she's sparring with um someone. Um, and she so she does keep from a very early age, she's always no, knew, known how to fight. Um, as a queen, she's supposed to know how to fight. Um, and she and she she does she does engage in hand to hand combat in, in certain parts of the story, uh, but she can hold her own. But you know she's I wouldn't call her you know an expert or anything. She's more of like if okay. you attack her, she will defend herself. Okay. And you said from a young age, so she's been somewhat consistent with some sort of some some sort of training in regards to fighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. I see and you, it was called the. Biosphere? Yeah, and so I call it I call it a coplasmic biofield. Bio so field. she, I'm sorry. Yeah, so she can emit this biofield from her body that resembles in its in its full form like a cloud or a moon or you know whatever you want to call it. You know. So how far out does that extend? Do you um do you have a kind of general uh, uh, size of that the, of the biosphere? Okay, you you will you will see the issue too. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you will see the issue. So I don't want to give nothing away. So you you will see that that particular power manifested in issue two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. To avoid spoilers, of course, we could we could assume that it's bigger than her person. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Media vicinity. <laughs> um, okay, and, and of course, I, I by no means want to dive too deep to, to, to do mm -hmm. any spoilers or anything like that. Definitely want to do that because we want people to go in and make sure to read it and all that good stuff and have, of course, obviously stuff to look forward to. Um, so, in regards to her strength, how strong is Luna? Um, is she as strong as a normal person, or like, as you know, average person? Is she peak levels of uh, of human physique or does she go beyond that um right now she is at like a, a i was i would say peak human um no that's actually not true um because i'm thinking about what happens to issue two so uh, issue one we saw her you know we saw her basically in her normal form but okay. issue two she's been awakened she's been awakened her powers within mm -hmm. have been awakened so She's not, um, 
I wouldn't call her a demigod level, you know, like Wonder Woman, but she's definitely getting stronger and stronger every day to the point where the person that she's sparring with is a known, you know, is known, it, it, he's a known energy keeper and he's very strong, very powerful. And she's sparring with him without using her powers. So, oh. and um, so she she's becoming more and more, she's come, becoming stronger. So, um, and eventually, obviously she's going to be one of the more powerful energy keepers in the story. So for, I guess for comparison purposes, she she can not at this moment, but she will okay. like once she reaches her peak, she'll be go she'll be able to go toe to toe with I would say like Wonder Woman or Nubia, um, but not now, but not yet. She'll get beat up. She'll get beat up right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, don't don't have her walk up to them right now. Yeah, not not right now. But at her once she gets to that point, she will be able to. I was I would say give give them a good fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, can I assume that stamina and durability are about that same level as well, kind of mm -hmm. somewhere between peak and beyond, somewhere in that in that range? Yeah, definitely. Okay. She, she's, she can go, you know, there, I, I don't know if I'm going to include it, but there was a scene that I wrote um, later in the story where she's able to hold her breath for like an hour. So... Um, but I don't know if I'm going to be, I don't know if I'm going to um, include that particular scene, but she, she definitely has, because she has the energy and this energy is growing within her. She has mm. the ability to last longer. She can take more hits, more punches. You know, she can get hit by a tree, a tree and get right back up. You know what I mean? So okay. it's the, the power level isn't there yet, but she's, she's getting there. You it's know. still it's an innate thing that's kind of still growing though exactly exactly okay so so next question then if say for sake of conversation obviously they're on a different planet but is she able to survive out in space and let, let's just say a hypothetical scenario or whatever like that there the ship blows up but she survives the explosion can she breathe in space can she handle that kind of environment so her connect her powers come from the moon so as long as she has a moon um, within her, I, I would say within thousands of miles, because you know, because the moon is a thousand, you know, thousands of miles from us. As long as she can connect, can can um, take that energy, you know, siphon that energy from the moon, she she's powerful. But as soon as you take her out of that element, just like Superman, as soon as you take him out of his element, he's yeah. he, his power begins to diminish. You you it's not you're not going to be able to kill her right away. But she mm. definitely will not be getting stronger. She'll be getting weaker. So okay. um, she always has to be it, have access to a moon of 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 the planet that she's on. <laughs> now, with her getting powers from from the moon, let's say she's in a system or near a planet that has multiple moons. Is she able to pull from all the nearby moons? Like just kind of stack that ability on top of each other like that? Yeah, yeah, she can. <laughs> She can. She um she can pull from um as long as she it's it's almost like uh you press a button and it, it exponential growth. You know, she can she can definitely as long as it's a moon, she can pull from it. So if she has Jeez. two moons, she's pulling double the energy. She has three, triple, you know. Okay. And then and then and then it's a it's a proximity thing. You said within thousands of miles of each other and stuff like that. So you know, you're around a Jupiter and Saturn. It's just like, yep, give me all of that. And then mm -hmm. still again, even beyond potentially even reaching stuff. So take a conversation. She's in our solar system. She could pull from every, all the moons in said solar system. Proximity wise. If she, I mean, obviously she's here on Earth. She'll be able to pull from, you know, Earth's moon and then maybe mm -hmm. the, the neighboring planets. I see. Moon. I see. But not like you know, what Saturn is all the way out there. Probably not Saturn's. Like, it has Fair. to be within a, yeah. I had to give her a kryptonite, you know. I didn't want okay. her to be too all-powerful because that would equate her to some type of god, you know. So, but she um, she has her limits. So, if people, if, but if, if the enemy knows that, they will use that to their advantage, you know, so. Okay. So, <clears throat> to what degree then... Right. So you say you mentioned earlier the tides and all of that um, or some level of control of water and stuff like that. 
to what level of uh, control does she have on that? And th that would be the same question in regards to ref uh, reflecting light and stuff like that. Is this kind of a almost natural mastery over it? And that, the thing I would compare it to um, would be like a like a Gara from Naruto, where it's just if if it's sand, he's controlling it. Like that's that's point blank period. So in this case, for her, if there's water around, she she essentially would be able to control that and light the same way. Is that is that what I'm gathering? Yeah, so she's not no avatar, like she's no no um, okay. you know, she she's she's not a controller of elements. So when the when oh. you think of the moon and gravity and the earth spin, the waves naturally, you know, make their the, the ocean naturally makes their waves, hits against the coast and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. She's kind of the same way. When you put her on top of the ocean and she and she will be able to create this this energy that will have an effect on the water. So she's not controlling the water, but when she gets, you know, emotional, when, you know, when she gets angry, she will have an effect on the water because of her natural connection to the moon. You know what I mean? So I she, she can influence water if, when, if she, and, 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 and maybe, maybe later, maybe I'll, I'll develop that, that part of her, but um, I'm, I'm trying to keep, keep it, keep her powers um a bit tame kinds of the connection to the moon so and the animals are the same way you know as humans we're we're affected by the moon um mm -hmm. you know, we know wolves are we know certain animals are just when they look at a the moon they 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 are triggered they are drawn to the moon they might be repelled by the moon you know so it's not that she is controlling these elements it's that just she has an influence over them um, and sometimes Ooh. an unspoken connection, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's a it's kind of like an afterthought, like an after power. You know, it's not like gotcha. It's like a direct response, a direct response to her existence in any given mm -hmm. area. Yeah, right. Okay. So she, you know, she's walking through the forest. The animals will come up to her because that's like, wow, you know, she she feels familiar to me. You know, she's familiar to me. I'm drawn to her. Mm -hmm. But it's not as if she can talk to them. It's not as if she, you know, and, and you know, I, I I say it, which allows her to control water and animals. That's probably very misleading. But she has an influence over water. She has an influence over animals. So Okay. Mm -hmm. Which still, like, even, even if it's not a direct, like, Aquaman, hey, I'm commanding you to do this, because mm -hmm. there's this level of familiarity, though. They, I, I still imagine at some point they would still kind of almost protect that, uh, protect her in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, she does have a connection to the moon. She has a connection to the elements around her, just like the moon okay. has a connection to Earth. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I do want to ask about how fast she can move. I know you mentioned that she can fly and stuff like that. Um, yeah. How how fast is Luna moving? Whether it's in the air or on foot. Hmm. I, don't, I haven't, haven't thought about that. Um, okay. She. So. So. And one. In issue two, we do learn that she is can run at the. She can outrun her palace horses at this point. So let me say, what a what horse might run at fifty miles an hour. I don't know. I have no idea what a horse runs at. But she uh, just just to, try to just, just to give the readers okay. something to kind of understand how fast she's becoming. So that's on land, though. I haven't really explored how fast she is in the air because we have it, we we have another energy keeper that's going to make an appearance that is actually on the level of you know um, I wouldn't say as fast as the Flash, mm -hmm. not 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 nearly as fast, but she she will be like a a, a, a she will be fast. She's going to be super fast, and that's going to give um, Luna a run for her money. So. Um, but she on on land. I having I have I don't know about air, but on land she can she can outrun a, a horse, you know. So yeah. Mm. Okay. And then reaction, right? So sake of sake of conversation. Obviously, hand to hand combat. She's gonna have some decent reaction speed and stuff like that. But let's say you know we put her in a a, a watchman type situation. She's yeah, you know, obviously completely different stories, completely different stars, stuff like that. But if somebody's trying to shoot at her and stuff like that, or Wonder Woman, right? How she's able to block and stuff like that. 
is Luna able to react to that kind of speed or or even beyond that? So Luna naturally will probably um, put up her biofield. So I see she, she she will be able to because she is connected to the elements uh, to the uh, to the environment around her. She will be able to sense when there's danger. She she's able to see when something's coming at her, um, and she would naturally put up her biofield. So she she will. It's almost like a shield for her. Um, okay. Right. And and she right now she's learning, you know, we learn how to defend ourselves first before we learn how to actually fight and throw a punch. Mm -hmm. So um, she that's where she is right now. She's she's learning how to protect her space, protect her people, protect her family. So she's kind of her powers are kind of in defense mode. Like you come after me, I'm going to defend it. But she is going to eventually learn with these these other sets of powers how to go on the offense. So right now, her response, if she was being attacked, her response would be to put up her shield. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, see, and that and that for me, that kind of adds like, okay, so she's one able to perceive things as moving super fast, but also that biosphere is able to adjust. Either is it a <clears throat> the activation of it, it's not a subconscious thing. She's she's able to perceive and feel those threats. And then she's like, nope, time to activate this. It's, it, it's going down. Is that kind of? Yeah, so so eventually, mm -hmm. okay. I, I, can't, I can't give it away. It's, it's, it, we will see, we, I, I can't say we will see that evolution um, of of this new this new you know this first power of her being able to emit her biofield and issue two we can I can say that for sure but I don't want to tell you how it happens because it gives away the story so but yeah, oh, yeah please don't know let's not mess that <laughs> the evolution of her powers in issue two and then um, of course in later issues we'll see even more, we'll see even more of her powers. So these are some good questions, Lloyd. I, I I never thought about like how fast can she run and how fast can she fly, um, you know. But I, I, if you can kind of visualize it, I guess if I visualize how fast she runs, it would probably be like you remember in Endgame where they were running, or maybe Infinity War. I think it was Infinity War. Yeah, in Wakanda, and they, and they were running the charge. Yeah, they were running. So and we saw T'Challa and and Captain America kind of out outrun all of them. She would mm -hmm. be right in there, that top three at, at okay. this point in her. And and that's probably, you know, like I said, as she gets more powerful, she'll get faster. But she can she can give them, you know, run. And even Wonder Woman when she was on the highway. You know, mm -hmm. she was out, you know, so she, so we she's in that that kind of that league at this moment in time. OK, I got now it. Think, but now, now that I can think about some examples, you know, <laughs> I would say I have two more. I have two more questions for you. Mm -hmm. One, does she utilize weapons? Are there any like weapons at her disposal as as herself, but also being the queen? What, what does she have on her disposal? Say somebody attacks the attacks the uh the planet or the palace if you would mm -hmm. well she doesn't normally carry her weapon um but she does have a weapon everyone in the palace is trained on a weapon she, like just like with her learning how to to defend herself she was she was taught how to um carry a weapon um again i haven't given it a name in the story because the focus is obviously her powers um yeah. but yes yeah, she does carry a weapon when when needed but but she's she, she Eventually, that's not a weapon is not going to be needed. She's not going to. She is the weapon. <laughs> Fair, right. OK. So last one. This is more of a story question that I just that I had a question about. And I don't I don't know if you could tell us, but I, I do want to ask uh, when in issue one, if you if, if you all are listening or watching and you haven't read Luna number one kind of spoilery because this is like midway to close to end of the issue so go stop here go and read it it's on their patreon or you can just visit the website and get the digital or physical uh copy copy comics okay spoiler warning okay <laughs> so when the time traveler showed up and they, they're talking to luna and all of that and they and, and luna brings up something along the lines of the uh those portals they, they've been closed um so was time travel a possibility in the past? And they were just like, we can't keep delving into this. Can you, is it possible to dive into 
the time travel aspect. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a reference to the foolishness that happened with, um, you know, in game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, use their time travel abilities to, you know, uh, gather the stones again, bring everyone back. But also Thanos, you know, he 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 was able to utilize that same power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it was after those events and maybe a few more full, you know, shenanigans that happened. Um, the the universe collectively decided to close the time portals. So, you know, okay. governments from all over the universe said, you know what, that's it. We can't we can't risk opening up the multiverse. We can't risk doing this. We can't we can't do any. We just we just going to close them for good. And we're not going to have hopefully this this the stuff that happened, you know, to our ancestors thousands of years ago will never mm -hmm. happen. again. so it was kind of a, a, a reference to that, you know, okay. um, that that I that did that. So. Uh, again, you know, Luna's ability to time travel is not necessarily linked to her ability to, like, you know, trans teleport into the past or future. Mm -hmm. But she has the ability to she she will develop this ability to sense others, and just like the moon is timeless, she's going to become this 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 um, into this energy that uh, can can sense things of the past and sense things of the future, mm -hmm. including people. So. Um, again, that's later in the story because that's not mm -hmm. that's not actually a, a, a power that I need her to have at this moment. But yeah. later, just like with the moon, it's been there for millions and millions of years. Mm -hmm. She's going to have this ability to, you know, go back in time, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of years, maybe. And then in the future, hundreds of years. But I haven't developed that power quite, quite. OK. You know, yet. Listen, so, I, I, I love all the possibility with that because that ties right back into that empaths portion and the attunement with the universe and the attunement mm -hmm. with all these energies and stuff like that it's like if there's an incoming threat okay she could be aware of it potentially mm -hmm. if there's we got to learn from the past she could tap into all this so i i really like all of the facets that you could go without having to necessarily do the traditional time travel it's still i'm learning from what happened before i can i can make sure certain things don't happen and then the course of the future in history can be changed. That, that's okay. I love it. I love all of it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So those were my last two questions. Uh, of course, I want to end off and have you let everybody know where they can find you, where they can pick up Luna, number one, and of course, when they can, if if you have a date, when they can expect to see Luna number two. All right. Yep. Yeah. So I'm Moon the Storyteller. I'm the creator of Luna, the Queen of Maru, um, a title from Concrete Comics. So you can go to concretecomics.com and pick up a copy. Now, I think we were actually sold out on this first print run, <laughs> but oh, um, reorders are coming soon. Um, and you can also have the ability to, to, to order issue one and issue two um, in our upcoming Kickstarter. So right now we're working on the Kickstarter page. You know, we're kind of putting all the finishing touches on it. And you know that whole process. You got to get uh -huh. it by Kickstarter. But once we have a date, it, 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 we we will definitely let everyone know. So it's coming. Issue two is finished. I'm actually reviewing the letterers. You know, the letterer just finished. I'm re reviewing that, sending some edits back to her. And so, yeah, issue two is done. Um, so it's just a now a matter of putting the final touches on it getting the Kickstarter page approved and Luna issue two will be here before you know it. But if in the meantime, um, you can go to concretecomics.com to read it for free, join the Patreon. But if you don't want to join the Patreon, that's okay. You got to wait for it until it, it we're back in stock. <laughs> <laughs> and then there. you can follow me. They can follow me on Instagram at moon, the storyteller. Um, I'm also on Facebook um there's a facebook group called superheroes in full color that i'm mm -hmm. also the owner of so and you're a moderator you're an admin i think a moderator so you got to post your stuff all this stuff that you're doing i want you know you you could post your stuff too on that group <laughs> they left okay it, incoming <laughs> thank you um i think i you know i think i was talking to lonzo about it but um, our daughter absolutely loves your stories. First, we love them, but she's she's read. But we have all the covers, and she's picked up each one. Was just like, 
It's the same one, Munchkin. I don't care. I don't care. So she's ready for number two. She loves it. Oh, and me and Joshua, oh. Yeah. She's I want you. I, I'm gonna send her a gift. I want to send her this card. So I want you to send DM me y'all um, address and her okay. name, her, her name and her address, so I can send her she's a card. Love yes. She's gonna love don't that. tell her. Don't tell her. Nope. Gonna be I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> I was gonna say me and Tasha was talking about this, and then we'll we'll close out here. We we're talking about how like literally, what you're doing is kind of that future of storytelling that that we're trying to accomplish, right? The stories that you're telling, it's not tied to, and I think me and you had this conversation before too, where it was just like being able to tell a story outside of that current circumstance, right? Like everybody is, you know, obviously we're expressing ourselves, we're showing stuff that, you know, maybe we're telling stuff that we've been through and stuff that's still tied to what we see every day. Luna is going like well beyond that. So I, I just want to say you're doing an outstanding job and it is a breath of fresh air. So just, just keep up the Thank great work you. with that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just, keep, you know, keeping up with y'all. Y'all have been an inspiration. I got the books. It's in my basket to read. I, okay. I, like I said, I've been supporting so many indie artists. I have like a stack of, of, of books I haven't even read. So, but yours, y'all's are like number two in my to-do list. So, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. I have so, I, I, I can't wait to dive in. Let me see if I can find it. I cannot wait to dive into it. Um, oh, it must. Oh, it's over there. It made it to my. It made it to my nightstand. So actually, let's go. <laughs> one step closer. <laughs> yeah, one no. step closer. So and you know, you know, I'm gonna be like, ah, you know, all, I'm, I'm gonna be hyping it up because I can't wait to dive into that story too. Listen, oh. and and good news, the next one is already just needs to be letter for the gray. So like that's yeah. Number three is actually getting worked on right now. Wow! Um, and so very excited, very excited for that one. Just <sighs> trying to keep up with, trying to keep up with concrete comics. <laughs> I don't know if you know that story. Initially, when we came out. I was just like, hey, I want more content. I want it now. I need to catch up to built in like solid concrete. I was like, that's what I want to catch up to. That's what I want to catch up to. And um, you know, that's but that's a whole other. That's a whole other. Discussion and conversation to story time, but no, y'all, y'all have been an inspiration to us uh, as well. So just thank y'all for what y'all are doing, Likewise. and to our listeners and everybody that's watching. Obviously, we're Midnight Comics. Definitely check us out on all of our social media. We're, we're Midnight Act Comics everywhere except for Facebook and YouTube, uh, which were just Midnight Comics on there. Don't forget to check out our Patreon. Where we obviously are going to be having these showcase first there. We have our community character creation nights and so much more over there. Midnight Adventures, the revamped version of it, episode one is up. Uh, rather, the prologue is up. Episode one is on the way. We have an awesome voice cast for that. Some familiar faces, Chris Fury and Kira Brown and several others from Blurred's Eye View is on there as well. And yeah, I think that's it for this episode of Indie Breakdown. Definitely stay tuned for more. We have a bunch of awesome, awesome creators coming through. And again, thank you, Carla, for being on. And um, You're welcome. Thank you, oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> And remember, everybody, until next time, midnight is coming. Bye.